So let us begin. And today we will discuss um, probably the most important topic of our course. Uh, we'll discuss a statistical hypothesis testing. And we introduce uh, important notions uh, that we will use all, all, over all the rest, uh, like uh, null hypothesis or p-value and so on. So I want uh, today's, uh, today's lecture to be, uh, uh, to be very clear. So if you have any questions uh, about uh, what I'm talking, uh, do not hesitate to interrupt me and uh, ask your questions. Uh, actually, this is as usual, but uh, probably today uh, will be a uh, rather, rather mathematical uh, lecture, so it can be uh, a bit more difficult than usual. Uh, so, uh, so my advice uh, is do not hesitate uh, to interrupt and ask questions. And uh, actually, uh, what is hypothesis testing uh, and uh, why we we need it. Um, uh, the main idea uh, of uh, the whole statistical approach to uh, data analysis is that if we think about uh, our data, we understand that uh, these data uh, were generated uh, with some kind of uh, random uh, random process, something that is involved some randomness. For example, if you consider some kind of um, field study, you probably have some informants and you have information uh, about these informants and you have some data that uh, these informants uh, produced, for example, recordings of their speech or texts uh, or something like this. Uh, and um, uh, uh, and uh, there is uh, there is uh, some randomness uh, in uh, this data because, uh, for example, in the field work, um, of course, it is uh, a kind of some random factors of what people we include in our sample, and uh, or if we recruit uh, some people uh, to participate in the research, uh, it is uh, usually done in some some kind of random way. For example, we just post uh, uh, post some note that you can come and participate in this in this experiment and people come. And of course, uh, this is uh, this is a kind of random thing. It is possible that we reproduce the same research. Uh, and uh, of course, we most probably we will get different participants of our research and we strictly speaking we will get different data and uh, our idea and actually the idea of uh, the whole statistics mathematical statistics is to uh, construct uh, some procedures uh, that allows us to make uh, some solid uh, solid conclusions from the data uh, that data uh, has some randomness in them, but our conclusions uh, should not be dependent on this randomness. And uh, they have to take into account this randomness in some way. Um, so uh, this is, uh, this is the, the main problem that we solve. And uh, I will begin uh, with a rather uh, theoretical example. Экран мигает, не знаю, ничего не могу сказать. Сейчас мигает? Это значит, что у меня с интернетом что-то не так, раз у всех остальных все нормально. Да, к сожалению, видимо, ничего не могу сделать. Окей. And uh, I begin with a rather, well, maybe um, the story that looks rather artificial, but uh, it is uh, this in this story. Uh, I believe uh, the main ideas uh, are seen very clearly, and uh, also uh, we will actually use uh, the test that we will discuss today 
in data analysis. Uh, actually, the test that we will discuss is called binomial test. And uh, let me consider the following story. Uh, let me assume that uh, I have a person who claims to be uh, to be a kind of magician, magician, or extrasense, or something like that. And um, I want to test: uh, Is it true that uh, this magician uh, has uh, some kind of magical abilities? And uh, as a kind of these magical abilities, uh, we decide to. Uh, to test, uh, is it true that uh, he can, uh, for example, look through walls or predict future or something like this. Uh, so I want to test, uh, to test for magical abilities. Uh, for example, predict future. And okay, how can how can we test? Uh, uh, is it true that uh, this person can predict future? Um, no, we can ask uh, we we can ask him or her uh, to to predict something and then uh, compare their prediction with with the result. Uh, but of course, uh, it is possible that um, okay. Uh, for example, uh, this this person can be correct with the result of the prediction. For example, uh, I can ask, uh, is it true that uh, tomorrow will be a good weather? And uh, the magician says, yes, it is true. And then uh, we wait until tomorrow and see that the weather is actually good. And so what? Should we conclude that magician has, in fact, uh, uh, some paranormal abilities or not. Uh, how do you think if I predict uh, the correct weather for tomorrow? Okay, maybe not tomorrow. Tomorrow I can just look at the broadcast, uh, uh, at the forecast, and probably not for tomorrow, but for example, for the next month. If I can, if I can uh, correctly predict uh, good or bad weather uh, in, in, after one month, uh, the same day, just on the next month. Okay, um, uh, Alexander says that we should test further. Why? Why it is not enough? I predicted it correctly, then uh, it seems that I have magical abilities. I can predict future. Why not? Maybe it accidentally happened, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, of course, we understand that such thing as weather, uh, it is a kind of random process and it is possible that I'm not a magician, I just like him. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if my prediction is not correct, uh, it is also uh, can be interpreted like, okay, I was wrong in, in this prediction, but probably I can predict future, but not with 100% uh, guarantees. Actually, a future prediction is a hard thing. So probably, I, probably it is possible that sometimes I make mistakes, but in, 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 in any way, I can predict future, but sometimes, sometimes mistakenly. So uh, we want to test something like this. We want to test, uh, is it true that I can predict future better than just random guess or not? Actually, um, it is not very easy to deal with weather, but we will, uh, and we will replace uh, this weather with something uh, more simple and we will use uh, some experiments like uh, coin tossing, uh, which uh, people in probability theory uh, likes because uh, this uh, coin tossing is a uh, very, very natural random experiment and uh, it, is, uh, it is very simple. So uh, I have a coin and uh, I can toss this coin and uh, it can land uh, either with head or tail Орел и решка по-русски, а по-английски это head и tail. And uh, if we if we believe that if we believe that uh, this coin is more or less symmetric, we see that we don't have any 
uh, reasons to believe that uh, probability uh, that coin lands with head is larger than tail or otherwise. Uh, so if we have a fair coin, uh, then uh, probability uh, of head is the same as probability of tail. And it is one half. So this this coin is called fair. It is also possible to construct non-fair coin uh, that will give uh, us, for example, more tails than head. I uh, I heard uh, that these coins can exist, but I have never seen uh, them by my by myself. But uh, anyway, it is a good model, and we will discuss non-fair coins uh, a bit later. But now I work just with fair coin. And uh, I conduct my experiment in the following way. Uh, so uh, assume that uh, I have a magician here, like I have two rooms. Uh, here I have a magician. So this is magician. And uh, in another uh, in uh, another room I have assistant, my assistant. I conduct an experiment. Uh, and uh, this assistant uh, performs uh, this coin tossing. And uh, magician cannot see this assistant and uh, he cannot uh, interfere with, with this coin tossing in any way. <laughs> so our experiment uh, is um, conducted in the following way. Uh, first, uh, magician uh, provide uh, magician provides uh, a series of guesses uh, for example uh, head tail tail head tail okay so uh, at the beginning we decide uh, so we set number of number of tosses, uh, number of tossings, and uh, for example, um, n equals to five. And uh, then magician provides a series of guesses like head, tail, tail, head, tail. Uh, then assistant Uh, tosses a coin n times and record uh, the results. Uh, so uh, the uh, the order of tossings uh, is important. So uh, the result also looks like also looks like this sequence. Yeah, for example, head, head, tail, 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 head. Uh, then we count how many times, uh, how many times yeah. uh, how many times uh, the magician was correct? Uh, so it, it means that uh, this uh, letter coincides with this letter. In our data that uh, I provided here, we see that this is correct, uh, this is not correct. Uh, so let me use this is correct, this is also correct, and uh, this is correct, uh, and uh, these two guesses are incorrect. So three times in the data, in the example. So uh, I compare this with this thing, this with this thing, and this with this thing. 
and here I compare like this. So we see that at these positions, uh, mag magician is correct, and in these positions, magician is incorrect. Uh, so now we calculate how many times uh, magician uh, provided a correct guess. And uh, after that, we have to decide. We have to make a decision. Uh, do we have evidence? Uh, that is enough to conclude uh, that magician uh, has paranormal abilities. So this is uh, this is a plan of our experiment. Uh, is everything clear? Uh, is it clear how the experiment is conducted? The the plan, the scheme of experiment. It looks reasonable, right? So uh, if if magician actually has uh, his paranormal abilities, he can probably guess uh, a lot of times. Uh, we allow him to to make mistakes from time to time. Okay, nobody perfect, uh, but um, at least we uh, we expect that uh, he will he will perform rather good if he really has yeah, these these abilities. So uh, let us look at the data that we have now. Uh, the magician um, the magician uh, guessed three times correctly. Uh, would you claim that uh, it is a good evidence in favor of his paranormal abilities? Three times out of five. Good. Surely no. No. Um, it's even possible to guess all five, and it still be a coincidence. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can. Uh, we can. We can try to. So. Uh, oh, we see that three out of five just just not enough. Okay. Uh, five out of five. So uh, um, now I'm, I'm asking the following question. I'm asking the question about this decision procedure. So uh, how many uh, times the magician has to guess uh, so that we conclude Uh, he has paranormal abilities. Uh, so uh, I'm just uh, I'm just asking about your your intuition and uh, what what will be enough uh, for you. This is not not a mathematical question. Uh, this is just a kind of common sense question. Okay, uh, what if uh, what if it will be uh, five correct guesses out of five. I agree with Sasha. Million out of million will be enough. Так, okay. Uh, so five, five correct out of five, not enough. It's far from enough. Far from enough. So, uh, so if we if you... don't have mm -hmm. any more, if we don't have any more tries. We should stop somewhere. Yeah, actually, actually, the actually um, the scheme of experiment uh, should be uh, should be known uh, before before the actual experiment. So actually, what you have to do is the following: you have to fix this number n, and uh, you have to you have to make this decision how how. How many times uh, should the magician uh, be correct to to be able to conclude that he really has magical abilities? Uh, actually, uh, the, this experiment uh, with this um, people who claim that they has that they have par paranormal abilities, uh, it is actually exists. Uh, the concrete scheme of the experiment is a little bit different, but 
uh, if you Google um, Goudini price, Harry Goudini price, uh, you will see that uh, people uh, actually uh, scientists uh, who tries to uh, to uh, convince uh, everybody that there are no such thing as uh, paranormal ability. They uh, established uh, the Houdini Prize, who uh, and they uh, uh, allow everybody who claim that they have um, paranormal abilities to prove that they have abilities by conducting an experiment like this one. It is conducted a little bit. Actually, uh, this experiment is negotiated with each um, participant of this um, of this prize uh, with different participants there can be different scheme of experiment but uh, this the scheme of experiment contains this information about what uh, they should guess and uh, what is the criterion uh, of success so this decision rule so now i just uh, i just uh, let us try to find this uh, this um, scheme of experiment. So we do this experiment once. We cannot continue, uh, continue and continue making these uh, guesses. But we have to do this experiment one, once. And um, after that, we have to decide. Uh, we either we will claim that the magician uh, really showed their abilities, and then we have to give him his prize. Uh, or uh, we say that no, sorry, you didn't, uh, you didn't do it. So now uh, let us try to to find what numbers are good. So uh, five correct guesses out of five, not enough. Why? Five out of five, it is it is a good result. No, actually, I I can't say that I can I can guess five five out of five uh, tosses. I I, I will not claim things uh, like this. Why, why would you say that it is not enough? Because the number of the symbol is not enough. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, why it is not enough? It can be the, uh, can be okay you need to, that's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, mm -hmm. if the the uh, the number of the symbols can be a big amount of, um, maybe like the <laughs> they said the the meaning mm -hmm. that can uh, maybe can say maybe uh nineteen eight ninety nine percent of millions of symbols he uh, correct maybe it can say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't believe in, in, in five out of five because we understand that, okay, the probability to, to obtain this kind of result is not very large, but it is possible just to, ju just to be lucky enough to, to make this guess. Okay, so uh, there are comments uh, that we don't believe in the supernatural uh, and this is why we, we need much more. Actually, this is an interesting question because it reflects um, another another story. Uh, actually, it is more more kind of bison uh, bison approach. When we have some prior uh, some some prior probability, we 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 don't believe in uh, supernatural, and so we need uh, better evidence, very 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 hard evidence to uh, to make us believe. But let us now pretend that we are more or less more or less neutral about supernatural. Maybe, maybe there is something that science don't know. Probably, probably somehow it is possible to predict the future. Uh, and uh, so, five of five is not enough. And uh, I believe that uh, I heard that million out of million is enough. Okay, uh, let me let me let me pick something in between. For example, twenty out of twenty. Uh, is it enough or not? Uh. 
So, who uh, who are, who are ready to 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 give a prize to a person who can uh, guess five, uh, twenty out of twenty coin tossings? I think it's quite uh, difficult to guess twenty out of twenty. Mm, yes. But it, okay. it should be some formula, but you don't want to tell it. I will tell you about the formula, of course, but now I'm just, I'm just testing your, your, your intuition. Okay, uh, 20 out of 20. Okay, let us, uh, let us say that we, do not, we will not claim that this particular person uh, actually has this supernatural power, but, um, but let us assume that we will, uh, we will continue investigation. So we can either say that, no, it is, it is, uh, it is, we, we don't believe, uh, we, we, we see, we, we think that it is just, just a coincidence and we stop uh, you know, the research with this uh, person. And uh, on the other hand, we can say, okay, it seems that this, there is something strange. We, we have to continue the investigation with this, with this particular person. Um, with, this, uh, with this statement, 20 out of 20, does it seem to be enough? Just to continue experiments with this with this person. It should be yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and five five out of five. No. No. Uh -huh. Maybe it's a matter of I don't know of mistake that is allowed yeah, for this yeah. person. It's because... a, that's, a, that's a good word. That's a good word about mistakes, and we will and we will discuss it now, just in a, in a minute. So uh, Sebastiana says that uh, 20 out of 20 is not enough because uh, we still have a probability to get it. I have a counter, uh, uh, counter argument. If we have 1 million out of 1 million, we also have some probability. It is possible to guess 1 million coin tosses out of 1 million. It is extremely small. It is ridiculously small, but it is positive. It is non-zero. So if you say that uh, 20 out of 20 is not uh, enough because there is some probability uh, to obtain it just by chance, then you have to say the same thing about this. Yeah. So uh, actually, let us, let us um, uh, reflect a little bit about uh, our story. So what do we have? Um, first of all, we have some, some claim uh, that uh, the person probably has some extra extraordinary, some paranormal abilities. And uh, we have some data. And uh, we also have some, something that is called some, like our default, default vision. We know that usually people don't have extra, extra, extra sensory abilities. This is, this is our default default belief and we have some data and these data can contradict this default belief in some way for example if we uh, uh, if we observe a person who can uh, guess uh, one million out of one million um, coin tests then we say okay we see that this is actually it, it seems to be contradicting to our default belief. We, we understand that by default people guess, okay, how many, uh, how many times people guess out of one million, out of one million tosses, just by default, if it is a fair coin. Five, oh, sorry, uh, yeah. 500,000. Yeah, by default it is about 500,000, uh, so. Uh, it is a half of this of, of these tosses, because actually uh, the probability to guess uh, just with just due to chance to to guess one tossing is also one half. Yeah? You can either, uh, for, for example, I can I can just say that it will be a, it will be a head, and I have probability one half to to be correct. So we can expect that uh, here we will get some somewhere around um, 500 of thousands 
correct guesses. And if we have this number of guesses, it is it is actually quite unusual, quite unlike, uh, unlikely to, to, to get, uh, provided that our default belief holds. So let us formalize uh, our model a little bit. Uh, we have uh, the following thing. Uh, we have a uh, so-called null hypothesis. It is denoted by H null. Uh, so this is null hypothesis. And in this case, a null hypothesis is that um, the magician uh, does not have paranormal abilities. And guesses by chance. So every guesses that uh, the magician um, make, every correct guess uh, guess should be attributed just just to do some kind of luck. This is our null hypothesis. Uh, this is uh, a kind of default vision. And uh, we have an alternative. How would you state an alternative? So uh, let me restate null hypothesis in terms of probability. Uh, what is probability to guess correctly one result of coin tossing? Can you repeat your question? Uh, what is the probability to uh, guess correctly the result of one tossing? 0.5. Mm -hmm. So probability of correct guess in one tossing is one half. This is our null hypothesis. So we, uh, we, we believe that these correct guesses are just by chance. They are just a coincidence. And so their probabilities are just one half. And how can you state uh, an alternative? What if uh, our magician actually has these paranormal abilities? One out of one. Well, one out of one is too good. Actually, if you would measure my mathematical abilities uh, using this uh, using this criteria, you will decide that I cannot count because from time to time I make mistakes. But... So, um, what, is, uh, what is an alternative? Uh, in, in, in which case uh, you would claim that, yes, some, some abilities actually present, maybe not, not very good, but something better than, than just guessing by chance. Uh, 80 percent okay uh, okay we actually can yes we can uh, we can put some specific number but uh, probably uh, probably we can just uh, consider and actually this is what we will consider is uh, the alternative uh, that probability to correct guess is just larger than one half yeah mm -hmm. Natalia is correct so I was uh, trying to say but I had some problems. Hmm? I just was trying to say it, but I had some mm -hmm. problems. Ah, I see, I see. Mm -hmm. uh, so correct guess in one tossing is larger than one half. So actually, actually, if there is a person who can reliably uh, predict uh, something as random as uh, coin tossing with probability like uh, one half plus uh, one tenth uh, can 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 become very rich uh, very soon because he can, for example, um, I don't know, make bets uh, in some gambling or just buy stocks uh, on the stock market, 
and if uh, if their prediction uh, prediction rate is just a little bit better than random, then uh, this is actually a big deal. Because um, okay, if I can if I can answer the question about which uh, which stock will go, um, is it true that uh, a particular stock will go up or down with probability a little bit better than one half? I can become rich uh, very soon just by playing on the market. So uh, actually, this alternative is enough for us. Everybody agree? Sorry, maybe I missed it, but what's uh, P? Uh, oh, yeah, probability, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is probability. Uh, sorry, I have, to, I have to, to write it. This is just, uh, this is just a shorthand for probability. So this is probability of, of the following event that is written in these brackets. So uh, this is actually our problem statement. Now, yeah, now, what about the alternative if P is less than one half? This is a good question, but I will not discuss it right now, just to simplify things. So uh, I'm now interested only in a person who can guess more often than one in one half. It is possible that uh, some person has very strange paranormal ability. They guess less than uh, in one half of cases. Uh, it is actually, again, very strange because uh, I, can, I can transform this person to a normal person who guess uh, uh, like this because I can just invert their guesses. Uh, and, uh, but I, I'm interested now only, only in this alternative. Okay, so uh, mm -hmm. yeah. It's just a uh, fun, uh, fun, fun fact uh, how mm -hmm. we could uh, get a uh, hundred uh, winner. Yeah, but uh, rock paper scissors uh, actually it 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 is probabilistic game when people play in it because uh, people do not have uh, so good uh, ability to. Uh, analyze uh, analyze the image. So uh, for people, it is uh, a kind of probabilistic game uh, because the best strategy is just to to do it randomly, to to choose uh, what to show randomly with equal probabilities. It is a theorem in game theory, uh, but for computers, it can be different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but we consider now a fair uh, a fair uh, experiment when. Uh, there is some wall that protects any interaction that 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 protects uh, the assistant uh, and this experiment uh, from the in any interaction with the magician. So everything is fair. Should be at least. Okay. Uh, now um, let us talk about mistakes, about our decisions and mistakes. Mm, actually, in this uh, statistical hypothesis testing, we have uh, two options. Uh, we can either claim that we reject null hypothesis, and in this case, we, we accept this alternative. Uh, it means uh, in, our, in our case with the magician, uh, it means that, okay, we, we see that there is something, something strange going on, and this uh, this thing cannot be, uh, in our opinion, this result cannot be attributed just just to luck, just to good chances. Uh, there is something strange going on. Probably mathematical, uh, probably magical abilities exist, or or something else. So uh, our decision procedure, uh, decision procedure, uses data. Uh, data to decide between two options. Uh, 
uh, first option, uh, reject null hypothesis. Reject null hypothesis in favor of an alternative. And uh, second option is do not reject null hypothesis. Um, actually, uh, why we say that we do not reject null hypothesis, why we don't say that we accept null hypothesis or we proved that null hypothesis is true. Uh, actually, our alternative uh, that is stated in this way, uh, it is rather weak one. Uh, I mean that it is possible that this probability to correct guess is just a slightly, slightly larger than one half. And uh, if it is just a slightly larger, it is possible that, well, we just didn't uh, collect enough information, we didn't collect enough data to see this, this difference between the actual probability and one half. So uh, actually any negative result uh, still allows us to, to say that, okay, we did not see that enough data to reject null hypothesis, but probably it is not correct. But, but uh, we, we don't have enough information to reject it. Mm -hmm. So, so there are two, two outcomes that uh, we, can, we can make. So in, uh, in other terms, uh, we can either give a prize to, uh, to a magician or we can say, no, um, uh, we don't give you a prize now, but probably, it, okay, it doesn't mean that you don't have magical abilities, but you have so small magical abilities uh, maybe that we cannot detect it. In, in our experiment. Probably if you if we did more, more of them, more research, probably we will detect it. So uh, let us uh, discuss some ways to, to make a mistake. Actually, what we have uh, is the following. We have some reality and we have our conclusion. And there are four options. Either null hypothesis does not hold. Or uh, null hypothesis holds. And our conclusion can be, uh, we can either reject null hypothesis or not reject null hypothesis. Um, so there are two, two ways uh, that we can be correct. We are correct if we reject null hypothesis when null hypothesis does not hold. And uh, we are correct if null hypothesis holds and we do not reject null hypothesis. And we are wrong in uh, two other cases. And um, they have there are different errors and uh, they have different names. Uh, if we reject null hypothesis provided that null hypothesis holds, it means that we mistakenly uh, claim that a person has magical abilities uh, provided uh, the fact that uh, this person does not have magical abilities. So this is called type, type one error or yeah, false positive. And uh, this is another case when um, null hypothesis does not hold, but um, uh, we not reject it. So if we had more information, we probably would reject it, but now we do not reject it. So this is called type two error. or false negative. Uh, 
So uh, let us uh, think about these two types of errors a little bit. Um, let us consider a different, uh, a different story. Let us assume that uh, I have, for example, I have, I, I have some test and I see that uh, there are two students uh, who provided uh, incorrect but coinciding answers to this test. And uh, we have a lot of them, a lot of these incorrect but coinciding answers. And um, I, I, uh, I have to decide, um, okay, why it is possible for two students to provide incorrect but coinciding answers to some questions. Uh, which possibilities do we have? So, for example, I have two works, two tests, uh, two works with identical incorrect answers. So, what can I suspect? That they cheated? Yes, uh, I, I suspect that they are cheating. So they are just copying. One of them just copied answers from, from, from another. Um, oh, they started using the same wrong nodes. Yes, it is also possible. But let's, let us assume that it is not possible. Uh, what, what, will they, uh, what will they claim if they cannot say that they just used the same notes. What will the students claim in this case? I, uh, I say you have the same wrong, wrong answers. What can they, how can they try to protect themselves against my- Because it happened by coincidence. Yeah, they, they can say that this is just a coincidence. Mm -hmm. It is possible. They can just calculate this probability and say, yeah, this is possible. This is not, not zero, just a coincidence. And you see that again, this is the same, uh, the same problem that we um, discussed before, because uh, we have some data, some coincidence between the results. And uh, this, um, uh, the, uh, we, have, we, have, we have the same, uh, the same results. And uh, we can explain these results either by coincidence, by some randomness, or by something that um, violates our initial assumption. By default, we assume that students do not cheat. And we have to provide evidence. If, we, if, if, if I want to accuse somebody in cheating, then I have to provide evidence. So um, we say that in this case, we have null hypothesis that they do not cheat. And we have alternative that they cheat. And uh, let us uh, return to this table and discuss what type one and type two errors uh, are in this case. So what is type one error in this case? So. That they were fair, but we, uh, on some reason, decided yeah. that they cheated. Yeah, uh, in this case, type one error is wrong accusation. It means that I accused students to be cheating. This is a serious violation of academic ethics. And I was wrong. And uh, what is type two error in this case? So type two error is this false negative. Uh, H null does not hold. So it means that an alternative holds. 
They so told what them is what they cheated. Uh, could you please repeat? Uh, the type two is uh, can be they told them that they didn't cheat, but uh, actually they cheat. Yeah, I missed uh, uh, I, I missed some cheating. So the students violated academic ethics, but I don't have enough evidence uh, to to show it, and and uh, this is also an error. Uh, so so we have these two we have these two types of errors. Uh, how do you think uh, which type of error um, is more severe? Which type of error you want to avoid? Type two, probably. Uh, so, uh, would you? So, if if you want to avoid type two errors, it means that you are more or less okay with false accusation. Okay, somebody will uh, be okay. Somebody will be expelled by false accusation, but but the it is just a test. We don't know what the, how it is important. Maybe they won't be expelled, mm -hmm. and it's better to tell them you cheated and look at their faces and <laughs> and maybe okay, the disability theory is not needed. Then <laughs> you will understand everything just looking at their faces. Okay. Uh, okay. So so. Assume that I don't have an ability to look at their faces. I can just file uh, a report to to a program supervisor, and they will expel them. Um, actually, people are usually more more interested in this type one error because type one error is some kind of false positive result. Your uh, you, you say that uh, that there is something some something unusual there is something that we do not do not expect it by default uh, and you are false so uh, actually people are people are mostly interested in the rejection of null hypothesis people are interested uh, that um, to, to say that something is is not compatible with our default vision and uh, so uh, this is why these type 1 errors uh, is uh, usually is considered as more important. And what we want to do is uh, we want to control the probability of this type one error. So uh, we want to say that if null hypothesis holds, uh, we don't want to reject this null hypothesis too often. And this is how our, this is how our decision procedure will be conducted. So the decision procedure uh, should satisfy the following uh, probability to reject null hypothesis provided that null hypothesis is correct should be small uh, namely it should be smaller than some predefined value Uh, called significance level. Uh, usual significance level is uh, usual significance level is five percent. So O dot O five. So uh, I want to be sure, uh, of course, uh, okay, these things are all probabilistic one. It is possible that I will make a mistake. 
in any case, with any uh, decision procedure, it, if it is meaningful decision procedure, uh, it is possible that I will make a mistake. It is possible that we are all so unlucky that I have the result that looks like something strange, something unusual, something contradicting null hypothesis, but in fact, it is just a result of coincidence. Yeah, people sometimes win in lotteries, despite the fact that the probability to win in lottery is very small. But people sometimes win. Uh, so uh, it means that uh, we, we have probability to make a mistake. What we want to do is uh, we want to control this probability. We want to say that uh, this probability to make a mistake is smaller than the significance level. For example, smaller than 5%. So now let us return to our magicians. Um, let me assume that my decision procedure is the following. Uh, we have five coin tosses and uh, if number of guesses, we have five correct guesses. Out of five, uh, then we reject null hypothesis. So we claim magician has uh, paranormal abilities. Otherwise, do not reject. Oops, sorry. So uh, actually everybody uh, told uh, that uh, five out of five is not enough, but let us uh, look actually at, at our statistics. So um, assume that my decision making process uh, looks like shown here. And I ask you what is our probability that we are interested in? What is our false, false, uh, false positive rate? What is our probability to reject null hypothesis, uh, provided that null hypothesis holds? Can you calculate it? So what is the probability to, what should we, uh, what should we find? Uh, first of all, we believe that null hypothesis holds true. It means that there is no magical abilities and uh, the result that we have is just purely by chance. Then uh, we have to find a probability to reject null hypothesis under this condition. We reject null hypothesis if we have five correct guesses out of five. So we have to find probability to get five correct guesses out of five. Can you find this probability? Five correct guesses. Should be one to 10, no? Mm, okay. Uh, any other, uh, any other ideas? Maybe not, probably not. So because we, if need, we... we need a bit of probability theory here. 
but don't be scared. Uh, that will not be too too complicated. So five correct guesses out of five. What is the probability? Actually, it is more or less uh, the same. Uh, so we know that probability to uh, guess correctly one coin tossing is one half. Uh, so we can imagine that um, instead of uh, writing which guess is correct and which guess is not correct, we have another coin and we have two uh, words on this coin. On one side, on one side we have a word correct and on another side we have word incorrect. And, the, uh, and then uh, to correctly, to, to give a correct guess is the same um, from probability point of view, it is the same as to, to get this word correct on, on a coin. So uh, what is probability to correctly guess Mm -hmm. uh, the first, the first result, result of the first testing. One half. One half, right. Uh, what is probability to correctly guess the second result? What is the probability that the result of the second tossing will be guessed correctly? Actually, the second tossing is no, does not differ in any way from the, from the first one. So the probability will be the same, one half. Right? Everybody agree? So now, what is probability to correctly guess Uh, the first result and correctly guess the second result. So what is the probability? Uh, actually, uh, we, we use here the notion of independent events because uh, we understand that our coin does not remember its previous choice. And so uh, the ability to correctly guess the second result is completely independent with, uh, the, with the fact that we correctly guessed the first result. So uh, as Sebastiana writes in the chat, uh, the probability that two events will uh, will uh, happen simultaneously uh, is product of these probabilities. One half times one half is one fourth. We can visualize it uh, like this. We can uh, guess first time. So this is, this is first guess. Uh, it can be uh, either correct and here probability one half or incorrect and here probability also one half. And after that we have a second guess and uh, again the probability of the second guess, uh, uh, of the correct second guess, is again one half. So we have here one half of correct, and here one half incorrect. Here is second guess. So uh, we are interested in both correct guesses, and we have to multiply these probabilities. So this is one fourth here. 
Okay, does it seem to be reasonable for you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, are there any questions so far? Actually, this is probability theory, so this is some... So, if you have any questions, uh, it is a good time to ask them. Okay, so actually we believe that probabilities of independent events are multiplied when we consider that uh, both uh, events, both in, you know, that both independent events uh, happens simultaneously. So this is uh, where we use this rule. And if we have more independent events, so for example, uh, what is probability to correctly guess, guess at first three tries? Uh, at first three tosses. Okay, three out of three. Three out of first three. Uh, what can I say about this probability? Mm -hmm. This is actually one half times one half times one half. So it is one over two to the power three or one eighth. Okay. So, let me re let me return to uh, to this question. What is probability to reject null hypothesis in this for for this decision making procedure? Uh, what is the probability to to make this kind of event uh, of mistake? And uh, is our procedure good? I mean, does it satisfy uh, this, this condition? Well, seemingly not because the number of N is too small. Mm, but what is what's the probability? Which probability do we have? What is what is this probability? The probability of a white uh, five uh, over five. Yeah. Uh, one alpha weighted the five. So uh, this is one over two to the power five. So it is one of thirty-two. And let me calculate uh, the value. So this is. O dot O three one two. So this is our probability to make a mistake. If I uh, would claim that person who uh, who guessed five out of five tossings. Uh, if I would claim that uh, this person has uh, paranormal abilities, then I would be wrong uh, with the probability of this. What do you mean? It means that um, probability to be wrong about his abilities is 3%. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, mm. this is this is actually a really a uh, really tricky thing. Um, I say the following: 
I say that my decision making procedure uh, will give me this false positive result in 3% uh, of, of cases. So probability to get probability to get this false positive result, provided that null hypothesis always wrong, is 3%. So it means that if I have if I have this um, like a Houdini prize and I have 100 participants of this prize, then uh, I will about three of them will take will take the money, will take the prize if I implement this decision-making procedure. It means that uh, there is a 3% uh, chance to guess. Is it right? No, no. Um, uh, okay, yes. Uh, it is yes, but we interpret, okay, yeah. We have 3% chances uh, to guess five out of five. This is correct. This is correct. But now we interpret it in terms of our uh, of our decision decision procedure. We say that uh, these three percents are our probability to wrongly reject null hypothesis, to say that a particular person is a magician provided that he is not a magician. And uh, as we claimed here, if we used a significance level of five percent, which is actually widely used uh, in current uh, modern literature, scientific literature. Uh, we have to say that this decision procedure is is okay. It is it is a good one. It is appropriate to make a decision. Okay. So uh, let me uh, let me summarize uh, just just a little bit. So uh, if an experiment is conducted in the following way, Uh, we have null hypothesis is that probability of correct guess equals to one half. We have an alternative that probability of correct guess of one percent. Uh, greater than one half. Uh, then if we get five out of five correct guesses and reject null hypothesis, so uh, this decision-making procedure Uh, is satisfactory uh, with 5% significance level of Honda. So this is what we have. Uh, probably it contradicts your intuition. Uh, probably you can say that five out of five is not enough. But uh, if uh, if you are if you are okay with this significance level, if you are okay that uh, you have a probability to make a mistake with uh, probability. Um, if you're okay with the probability to make a mistake of 5%, then uh, with this assumption, uh, this decision-making procedure is, is good enough. So, 
let us uh, consider a, another another decision making procedure. What about four or more? Correct guesses. Then reject null hypothesis. Uh, what about this procedure? Is it good or not? How do you think? What should you find to answer this question? So actually now the probability of um, of the mistake of the first type is over 5%. How do, um, how because do you know it's, it? Now, now it's, it's 1 divided by 16 instead of 1 divided by 32. How did you obtain 1 divided? Uh, sorry, four, uh, 4 or more, uh, let me say, out of 5. Ah, it's, it's out of five. Okay, right. yeah. it's out of four. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, four, four or more out of four uh, is all. We can also find it, but uh, now I want I want to, to 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 use this probability. Four or more out of five. So uh, it is uh, a bit more com complicated uh, question. It is a bit more difficult question. Uh, actually, um, let us find this probability. So let us find a uh, probability to, to get four correct guesses. Out of five. So uh, if I want four correct guesses out of five, it means that I have something like this. Correct guess, correct guess, correct guess, incorrect guess, then correct guess. Uh, what is the probability of, of this sequence of results? So this is correct. This is incorrect. Uh, how can you find the probability of this of this sequence? Well, actually, it seems that um, the probability is the same as as the probability of five correct answers, since the probability of an incorrect answer is, is the same as the probability of a correct answer. Yeah, sure, you're correct. So uh, probability to, so this probability is just a product of probability to be corrected the first time, probability to be corrected the second time, probability to be corrected the third time, probability to be incorrect at the fourth time and probability to be corrected uh, the fifth time. But uh, probability to be correct is the same as probability to be incorrect. So it is again, uh, one half times one half times one half times one half times one half. And it is again one over thirty-two. But uh, what about uh, this event and uh, this event? Four correct guesses. Of course, uh, in this case, if we have this event, uh, we have four correct guesses. But we also have other ways to obtain these four correct guesses. Can you find? how we can also obtain four correct guesses. Not, not in this way, not with this particular sequence of correct and incorrect guesses. Just changing the sequence, but maintaining uh, four correct and one incorrect. Yes, can you provide an example? Uh, correct, 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 incorrect. Yeah, for example, we can put this incorrect to the last place. And what is the probability of this thing? 
Same. The same. So, uh, what is the probability to uh, get four correct guesses out of four? Uh, out of five, sorry. Out of five. So we have to find probability of this event, this event, and all other events that satisfy the same condition. So we have this thing, we have this thing, what else? We have this thing, this, and this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five possible sequences that uh, satisfy this condition. And it means that the probability is five times one over 30, 32. And finally, what is probability to get five or more, uh, sorry, four or more correct guesses? So does it mean that if we just multiply one half uh, four times, it won't give us an answer? Mm -mm. It won't. Actually, uh, if we multiply one half four times, we'll get probability to get four out of four. So mm -hmm. probability four out of four mm -hmm. is what you said. But now we consider a different case. What is the probability to get four out of five? Just different, different probability. And here it is calculated. It is five over 32. And finally, what is this probability? Six multiplied one over 32. Yeah, we have to add, uh, we, uh, here we found this probability four correct guesses and if we have more than four correct guesses it means that we have five correct guesses out of five so this is sum of two probabilities And this means that it is five over 32 plus one over 32, and it is six over 32. Fortunately, you don't have to make these kind of calculations every time you need it, because uh, R can calculate everything for you. But I just want to show how this, uh, how this calculation works. And um, so you have some hand-on experience. So, um, is uh, our if we use if we use this decision rule, if it is enough for us uh, to have four out of five correct guesses, is it uh, a good decision procedure? Can we reject null hypothesis in? If we would reject null hypothesis in this case, will it be uh, a good decision procedure according to our to our standard, to our five percent significance level, or not? So probability to reject. What is probability to reject H naught provided that H naught holds in this case? Well, six divided by 32. Mm -hmm. or... So, and we can use a calculator to find it. It is about all dot. Something like this. 
So is it good procedure or not? It's obviously, obviously over 5%, so, mm -hmm. <laughs> so not so good. So it is not good, not appropriate procedure, decision procedure. So we would basically claim that people are magicians uh, with probability about all the two. It is too, too large. Okay, so now let us make a 10 minutes break. And after this break, um, I think that uh, I want to say just a couple of words about the p-value after the break. And uh, then we uh, continue uh, studying R and how to uh, apply all our knowledge to R or vice versa, apply R to this knowledge. So I'll see you in 10 minutes.
So we can probably continue. Uh, so uh, let me, um, I want to introduce a new notion, uh, the notion of p-value, uh, but to, to do it, uh, I have to reiterate uh, once again, um, everything that we discussed so far. So the notion of p-value, uh, let us, uh, let us uh, look at, at um, what we, discussed so far, we consider it a case when we have uh, five coin tossings. And we see that uh, if we have five out of five correct guesses, then it is enough for us to reject null hypothesis. But if we have uh, four or less, um, if we have, for example, uh, this situation, we will not reject null hypothesis. Because if we would reject null hypothesis for four correct guesses or more, then uh, this uh, decision-making procedure is not, uh, is not good for us. It does not satisfy our condition of control of probability to make a mistake. Uh, now, um, let me consider a bit more general question. Uh, so currently we have the following picture. I can, uh, I can draw the so-called, uh, I can draw a thing that is called distribution of uh, our number of correct guesses. And this distribution will look like the following. This is a picture. So number of correct guesses. Uh, provided that null hypothesis holds. And uh, this picture looks like uh, the following. So um, on the vertical axis, we have probability. So, uh, and let us assume that we have n equals to five now. Uh, so, uh, we have the following picture. Uh, it is possible that we have five correct guesses and uh, the probability of this event is one over 32. It is possible that we have uh, four correct guesses, three, two, one, and zero. So uh, what is the probability to have four correct guesses? We know uh, we already found that it is five over 32. So it would be somewhere here. Uh, so this is one over 32. 1 over 32. Uh, what about what about probability to make uh, three correct guesses out of four? Uh, I don't uh, ask you about the exact value, but um, is it larger than uh, this value or smaller? How do you think? What is more likely uh, to guess three out of five or four out of five? is three. Three out of five is more likely. So we probably have something like this. And what about two out of uh, five? Uh, is it more likely or less likely, for example, than three out of five? It's more likely also two. I think it is more likely. And what about one out of five? or probably better to ask about zero. What is the probability to correctly guess zero out of five? Four is the 
one uh, first uh, 32 yeah this is the same uh, the same probability uh, to to guess zero uh, the probability to guess zero is the same as the probability get five everybody agree and actually uh, this picture is symmetric and let me draw it like this one Does it mean that the higher chance is to guess two or three? Yes, uh, yes, the largest chance is to guess two or three. That's correct. And for fair coin, it will be uh, uh, the usual the usual case. The largest chance is to guess correctly half of the cases. But if we have uh, even uh, if we have odd number of cases, it is uh, one of these two middle numbers. So uh, now uh, we can say the following thing. Uh, we see that we can draw at this, uh, at this picture, we can draw the so-called rejection region. So uh, we see that uh, here, if we have five out of five, we will reject null hypothesis. And here, we will not reject null hypothesis. And in this case, we see that probability to reject null hypothesis, provided that null hypothesis holds, is this probability and it is less than 5%. It is less than the significance level. So in a sense, we have some kind of threshold and we say that if a uh, number of uh, correct guesses is larger than this threshold, then we reject null hypothesis. This is actually natural. This is actually what we started uh, about. I asked you uh, what number of correct guesses is enough for you to, uh, to claim that this person has uh, uh, paranormal abilities. And uh, in this case, this threshold is, uh, is here, is at, at, at number five. But if I put uh, not uh, n equals to five, but something larger, it is possible that this threshold will get not only one value, but several values. I mean the following. Assume that I have uh, something, something, something larger. Uh, for example, assume that I have n equals to 10. Then it means that I have a picture that is similar to the previous one. So it is possible that I have uh, from zero to 10 correct guesses. And again, here is a probability. And um, okay, what about n equals to 10? What is the probability to get 10 out of 10 guesses? It is actually extremely small. Not extremely, but very small. It is uh, one over Two to the power 10, which is about 1000, very small number. And here is also some small number, but a bit larger. And actually my picture will look like the following. So I have a maximum somewhere here at number five. And I will have a picture like this one. Actually you will plot uh, the exact picture like this one uh, we, with R, using R, but now uh, I just give you some draft. So this is my probabilities. Everybody understand what is shown on this picture? Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, nobody can, uh, can make an answer that everybody understands. 
So, are there any questions? Uh, is uh, this uh, a linear? Uh, no, it is yes. not. No, no, no. It is not linear. It is something, something, something like this. Something. Actually, it will be uh, uh, close to normal distribution uh, a bit later. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't want uh, to give you exact formula because it is not very useful for us. But it will just look like this bell-shaped curve. Um, just a second. So uh, now, how uh, how our rejection region should look like? Uh, what if uh, we will reject this? What if our rejection region is here? Uh, what if we will reject null hypothesis, uh, provided that we have 10 out of 10 correct guesses? Is it good procedure or not? Well, the chance that we make a mistake is extremely small, so is it good? Okay, yes, but probably we can extend this region here. Uh, probably we can extend it to, to this number, to number nine. So uh, what, if I, uh, what if I consider this rejection region? What should I check uh, to understand is it true that this rejection region is also good or if it is bad? So we should check, like we, we should get the sum of the two probabilities of, of mm -hmm. probability to give 10, ans 10 correct answers out of 10 and nine correct answers out of, out of 10. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we have to find some of these two probabilities. And actually, um, if I want to consider the, the largest good uh, rejection region, I can just find uh, such, such a threshold value that uh, this probability, the sum of, of these probabilities, would be less than 5%. So, so I want to put threshold Uh, such that this probability uh, is less than 5%. And uh, I want to move this threshold to, to the left as far as possible. Uh, provided that uh, this probability is less than 5%. Okay? Uh, okay. So, uh, my, uh, my last idea, idea is the following. So, uh, for example, I can uh, I can actually okay. My uh, my idea is the following: we have this we have this rege rejection region, and we know that uh, some of these probabilities probability over this rejection region is less than five percent. Now uh, we can do it uh, in a different way. We can state our decision rule in a bit different way. Uh, let us uh, let us consider the following thing. <clears throat> so let us uh, consider the following probability. Um, 
assume that uh, we have, for example, seven correct guesses. out of 10. Uh, how to figure out uh, does 7 belongs to the rejection region? So, uh, should we reject the null hypothesis? So, uh, assume that I obtained uh, the value 7. I have seven, 7 correct guesses out of 10. I'm trying to understand, um, is it enough? Uh, is it a good evidence uh, to reject null hypothesis or not? How to do it? Are there any ideas? Actually, I did not, I did not, I did not uh, construct it here uh, the full rejection re region. I just say that this rejection region will start from some value, and um, <clears throat> I will uh, pick this starting value in such a way that this probability uh, will be less than five percent probability to get larger results than. Um, this threshold will be less than 5%. Then uh, I put, uh, uh, then I get some value, uh, value of seven. And I ask, uh, is it enough to reject my null hypothesis? Or in other words, is it true that uh, this value lies in this rejection region? Is it true or not? How can you, how can you figure out it? Any ideas? Is seven enough or not? Assume that you can calculate all the probabilities on this picture. So you can calculate these values. What should you check to answer this question? Well, we should sum the probability like the, the probabilities um over than seven i mean and the probability of the seven out of ten itself mm -hmm. and then see whether it's it exceeds uh 0 0.05 or not uh the actually this probability The probability to get seven out of out of ten, or some other probability. So, uh, am I interested only in in this in this point, or in some other points? Well, uh, we're interested in points to the right of the of this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, look, this is correct answer, and actually, I I, I want everybody to understand it. So. We can find probability to obtain seven or more correct guesses uh, provided that null hypothesis holds. This is some probability. So uh, I want to find probability of this event. That we have seven, eight, nine, uh, ten. And uh, if this probability, so uh, then let us assume that I know this probability. Uh, what what happens next? What should I do next?
But okay. isn't it uh, the same as we did for like uh, when we counted uh, four out of five? So uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, the actual. We did all, all... All, all the same steps. Like the, the, the actual calculation will be uh, the actual calculation will be very similar. Yes, but now I want uh, I want to understand what to do with the result. Assume that I have some result. Um, actually, I think I can even find this result. But uh, what to do with this result? simply to compare it with the level that we took as referential like mm -hmm. yes exactly we have to compare it with uh compare with our five percent with significance level like five percent uh why uh look at the picture again so if i know that the probability to be here is less than 5%, it means automatically that this, this threshold would be to the left of uh, value seven. And it means that the value seven itself is uh, to the right from uh, this threshold. And it means that it is in the rejection zone, uh, zone in the rejection region. Otherwise, if this probability is, is large, if it is larger than 5%, it means that, the, uh, it means that this threshold uh, would be to the right of uh, this point. And it means that uh, this point is out of the rejection, rejection, uh, rejection region. Is it clear or, or, or not? Actually, this this reasoning is simple. It is more or less tautological one, but it is not very simple to uh, to get it. Uh, this this is a kind of paradox. So, uh, should I repeat? Yeah, <laughs> please. Okay. Okay. Look. Okay. Look. Uh, I find probability to obtain seven or more. Okay, just just uh, let me make a step back. Uh, I uh, I want to find this rejection region. This rejection region uh, it consists of large enough values of number of correct guesses. Uh, I I choose this rejection region in such a way that uh, this probability, the probability of of this rejection region. Uh, is less than 5%. So I just try to find uh, this threshold in such a way that sum of probabilities of these points is uh, less than 5%. And I want to move this threshold to the left as far as possible, but uh, not not too far. I want I want this probability to be small. Okay, is this idea clear? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. Okay. Now, uh, now uh, I, I assume that I found this this threshold, uh, but forget about it. I found, but but, but lost it. But now uh, I have my data. I look at my data, and I see that in my data I have value seven. So I have seven out of ten, uh, seven out of ten, uh, correct guesses. And now I want to understand, uh, now I want to understand, uh, does my value seven belongs to the rejection region or not? And to do so, I just find the probability uh, to obtain seven or more correct guesses, provided that null hypothesis holds. 
So I just find the sum of values of this, 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 this. If the sum is less than 5%, it means that uh, when, I, um, uh, when I calculated my threshold, uh, I, I put my threshold to the left of this value, right? Because if, if, this, if, this, if this probability is less than 5%, then I can put uh, my threshold here. And it means that uh, seven lies in the rejection in the rejection region. On the other hand, if I have uh, this probability, this probability, this probability, to be larger than five percent, it means that I stopped my uh, uh, threshold somewhere to the right from this point. And it means that this rege rejection region, which is here, uh, does not contain this point. And it means that I cannot reject null hypothesis in this case. Does it make more sense now? I just wanted to ask, so everything depends uh, on this uh, significance level. So uh, if we say that uh, significance level is 1%, uh, then one result, if it's like... Yes, yes, it? exactly, exactly. And is it like uh, arbitrary or it is uh, this 5%? Well, uh, well it, is, it is arbitrary it, and it is, it, is, it, it, is a kind of, it is a kind of convention. At least in social science and in linguistics, currently five percent uh, is is the significance level that people usually use. Actually, we have a trade-off uh, between type one errors and type two errors. The smaller your significance level, the more cautious you are. Uh, the less uh, you well, you need the more evidence to reject null hypothesis to claim something significant. And if you have small significance level, significance level, then it means that you will have smaller probability to make wrong claims. But uh, it makes, uh, but it also means that you have less um, ability to reject null hypothesis. So you need more data and so on. So this is um, this is a kind of trade-off, and this trade-off is just. This value is just is, is just some conventional value. That is so. Currently, a state of uh, our field is like that. Five percent seems to be okay. Probably later it will be decreased to one percent. Okay. So uh, what I want to say is that this thing uh, is called p-value. So by definition, p-value is probability to obtain uh, the result uh, that we actually obtained, that we actually observed, uh, provided that new hypothesis holds. Okay, to be exact, uh, probability to obtain the result that we actually observed or more extreme. Provided that null hypothesis holds. So like this, uh, we, we, obtained, uh, we, we observed the result seven, and then we uh, ask what is the probability to obtain seven or more correct guesses, provided that null hypothesis holds. Sir, may I ask a question sure. again? Sure, yes. I'm, I'm really sorry if I disturb someone else, but uh, why should we know the sum of uh, all the probabilities lying after? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, we, uh, look, uh, we want this, uh, what we want? We want, uh, we want to construct a rejection, rejection region such that if we, uh, if we have observed result in this rejection region, then we will reject null hypothesis. And we also want 
Um, okay, this this picture is drawn under the condition uh, that null hypothesis holds. So we want uh, the probability uh, to falsely reject null hypothesis to be less than uh, 5%. And it means that we want uh, that this probability, probability of uh, probability of uh, to, to, to get, for example, in this case, uh, probability to get 9 or 10 uh, would be less than 5%. So we have to find some of these probabilities because in both of cases, we will reject null hypothesis. So this is why we are interested in uh, the sum of these probabilities. Here, when we, when we choose this threshold. We want, we want to choose a threshold such that the sum of probabilities to the right of this threshold is less than 5%. Because this is, this is exactly the probability to falsely reject null hypothesis. This is probability of our type one error. And so this is why, this is why we need this sum. And then when we uh, consider the p-value, we actually just, just repeat the same procedure. We are interested not in this particular value, but also in more extreme values like this. Again, we are interested in the sum of, of these probabilities. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it has some... Uh, 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 okay, I'll rather not uh, suggest any hypothesis more because now it's clear. Okay. 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 So, so, and actually, our decision procedure uh, now works uh, like the following it is very simple. If p value less than alpha, then reject null hypothesis. Otherwise, do not reject null hypothesis. And that's it. Actually, this p-value, in a sense, it measures how, how, how bad our data that we have. Um, in a, in a sense, uh, how, 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 how much they contradict to, uh, to the null hypothesis. If, if this probability is very small, it means, that, uh, it means that the probability to obtain this kind of data that we actually obtained, provided that null hypothesis holds, is very small. And it, it works as an argument against null hypothesis. We see that if we believe in null hypothesis, then we have to be extremely lucky to obtain the data that we actually obtained, or more extreme data. And this uh, constitutes an argument against null hypothesis. This is, constitutes an argument to reject null hypothesis. If this, if this, if this probability is small. If, if it is large, on the other hand, we do not have, uh, we do not have evidence against null hypothesis. We do not have strong evidence. So this is how this hypothesis testing works. And now I'm sorry that I took a lot of time from, from the seminar, but now uh, we can switch uh, to, some, to some practice. Are there other questions about the lecture? I have a long questions, but yes. I'm wondering whether it is appropriate to ask it. Uh, now I am confused how to uh, about the formula how to again to count uh, the probability to get uh, seven out of seven or more out of. Uh, oh, uh, you you don't need you don't need this formula because you have R, uh, uh, and it will calculate it for you. Okay. Uh, actually, it is very. Uh, it, uh, I think that it is very good to be able to find these probabilities by hand, because it's simple. It is also simple to find this probability by hand. 
but uh, to consider this part of the picture, you have to do some combinatorics, some binomial mm -hmm. coefficients, and uh, it's become complicated. If you're interested in mathematics, uh, we can discuss it, but you don't actually have to, 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 to 